This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! After going home, I changed my clothes and dug my bike out of the garage. Never mind, we're riding our bike to Hooters. Classy. Just thinking that I would be able to meet Shion again gave me the mysterious feeling. Did you let your parents know where you're going? Shion, a name for a different kind of Mion. She was a mysterious and ridiculous person, believing she had fooled everyone like that. I love this music. I noticed that I was pedaling along quite happily. <laughs> it's perfect day. Could it be that I was looking forward to meeting Shion? I felt a sense of giddy anticipation, like I was headed towards a new friend's house for the first time. <laughs> Rule one of being a friend to a girl. Don't say she's not cute. True. What Rena said about Mion actually being fem really feminine sprang to mind once again. The guilt from spying on another side of Mion, the self-conscious from being the only one that knew about that side. These feelings mixed together. That was Shion for you. Mion's little twin sister. Until she felt like coming out and admitting she was Mion, it was just fine to just call her Shion, right? Mion might be trying to have some fun by acting out a different persona. As I reached the top of the steep hill, the horizon expanded before me. I was almost at the station. The last time I wasn't embarrassed since I was here was with Dad. But this time I was alone. I was strangely self-conscious about it. Oh yeah, it's not weird going to Hooters with your dad, but going by yourself. Ugh. Meet Shion, get my key back. That was all this task was supposed to be. If I dawdled around like this, maybe Shion would find me before she headed out for work. Hey, hey, what are you doing, Keiichi Maibara? You're just here to get your key back, you know. It's not like you're some love-struck schoolboy here to hand over a love letter. Ah, uh, the thoughts inside my head were slowly turning into a jumbled mess. I came to the realization that I was downright giddy. That's why, for just a bit. Just a tiny little bit. I got a little carried away and did something really stupid. I kicked over a parked motorcycle that was blocking the sidewalk. Bruh, what? It was in the way, sure, but there was absolutely no need for me to kick it. I definitely think I got too carried away. <laughs> Crash! Uh-oh. Zinniope is not going to be happy about that one. As the free bikes toppled uh, one after another like dominoes, the loud noise they made cut snapped me back to my senses. Uh-oh. We kicked down free motorcycles. Kyo and her boyfriends are not going to be happy. I mean, her boyfriends? Plural? What? That's not a thing. The owners of those free bikes were right there. They looked exactly like what you'd call thugs up to no good. They lifted their heads up in an imposing manner and yelled angrily in a way I had never heard before. Oh, now we get the action! The three of them beeline towards me, the worn-out heels of their fin-soled shoes slapping noisily against the pavement. I could only stare listlessly as I was watching some far-off far, far off event that did not concern me at all. By the time I realized it, I had been grabbed by the collar and lifted onto my tiptoes. <laughs> The free thugs were completely ignoring the rules of grammar, but the way they spoke was enough to make me tremble. Just like that, my composure drained away. My legs buckled and my throat grew dry enough to crack. <laughs> I was completely at fault, so there was nothing I could say in my defense. As a result, I was pulled even higher. <laughs> Well, that's d well, that was stupid on your part, Keiji. It was, it was the Katakis. The three of them continued to yell at me. I had no idea what each of them were saying. Getting fervor and rage that I was only listening while dumbstruck, they grabbed an empty plastic crate from a nearby store. Oh, wow. And they began to smash it repeatedly against the telephone pole. At least it wasn't against my head. Cracks formed in the crate, plastic shards flying everywhere. They then slammed it full force into the shuttered storefront. The shutter let out a frighteningly loud noise. Still not satisfied, they flipped over a case of empty cans, scattering its contents all over the place. This was not normal. Are they on some kind of drug? It was something you saw often in television or in a manga, but I never thought seeing it in person would be this terrifying. I became painfully aware that the safety of civilized society was only held up by such a frail concept as morals. My knees clattered together noisily. Static began to pepper my vision. This is what you would call absolute terror. There was nothing I could do to stop this frightening spectacle of violence. 
I could only pray for help. The fear I felt was just too much. Would somebody help me? My gaze floundered about the surrounding area. This looks very much like that one street in Clannad, by the way. I was surrounded by these three hoodlums. No way there would be a passerby brave enough to intervene. Maybe this is what you call reaping what you sow. If I were a passerby, there would be no doubt that I'd ignore what was going on. So this was somewhat of a cosmic retribution. Angry yelling loud enough to rattle my eardrums spewed forth right in front of my face. Don't be afraid of them, they don't have sprites. My waning consciousness was forcefully dragged back to the forefront. The fug had cocked back his free hand and twisted his body, when suddenly a metallic taste flittered through the back of my throat. A chill ran down my spine like a jolt of electricity. Seeing what was going to happen next, I squeezed my eyes shut as tightly as possible and gripped my teeth. Oh! That voice was a short distance away. Still holding me by the collar, the free thugs sprang around to look behind them. Oh! I was not expecting uh, her to come to the rescue. What is she going to do about it, though? Oh, wait, never mind. Mion has a gun! Oh, this is great! <laughs> Standing there was Shion. I mean, Mion. She stood there displaying an imposing stature that I'd never seen before. Uh-oh. She didn't have the same look on her face as she did when we were playing around during the club. Those were the eyes that would instill fear in anyone who looked upon them. The eyes of a raptor. They were the epitome of terror. At the same time, they were the most reassuring fiends in the world. I mean, they're not grabbing onto him now, but... Mion, without an ounce of fear, laid down her ultimatum. Her ultimato. Of course, there was no way those three wouldn't go absolutely berserk. The situation instantly turned explosively dangerous. Uh, she got a gun. You definitely don't want to be doing that. Stop it, Mion. These guys are like rabid dogs. No amount of buffing will work. Mion, I I knew I, what I was saying was pathetic. But I couldn't let Mion get involved in this. No matter how you looked at it, Mion was only bluffing. But did Mion even know the meaning of the word bluff? However, the reason behind everything soon became apparent. They were slowly increasing in number, little by little. At first, it was only businessmen on their way home stopping to take a look. Then it was housewives in the middle of shopping taking a gander. Next, what seemed like the owner of some store showed up. And it was pretty clear he wasn't just looking. Around Mion, there was already about seven people gathered. It felt different than people coming out to support a friend. If I had to say why, it was because the group that gathered was diverse in age and gender. The free thugs seemed to slowly realize that there was something strange about the situation. <laughs> or are these Mion's extended relatives? Behind them at some point, four more people of differing clothes and ages had gathered. A girl who looked to be in middle school. A man wearing a bakery apron. An old lady in a house-cleaning smock. More and more... people of various ages. Their gazes, comparable to Mion's, were of hostility. Oh, this is this one of those times where it's like, We all know Mion. You ain't messing with this girl. <laughs> of intimidation. Before I realized it, over ten people had formed a ring around us. At that moment, five elementary schoolers ran in and joined the circle. <laughs> there were some familiar faces. Some of our classmates. Then these people were... Residents of Hinamizawa? More and more people from Hinamizawa gathered around. In obvious contrast, the residents of Okinomiya were passing by as quickly as possible. The group surrounding us had suddenly swelled to about 20 people. Yes, look at all these people. Completely encircled, the faces of the thugs began to show the first signs of panic. Nobody spoke a word, Mion included. That made everything completely unnatural, and depending on which side you were on, completely terrifying. Only the thugs' voices echoed out like they were screaming. Somebody took a step forward, closing the gap between them. As they did, everybody else took a step forward, shrinking the circle. The hoodlums went pale as they were pushed together, back to back, while still yelling angrily. They were trying to string together vulgarities, but for some reason it sounded like they were crying out for help. Hi, 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 hi. Oh boy! Here he is. It was sudden. A solidly built officer cut his way through the crowd. At some point, two police cars had arrived. 
Some passerby had undoubtedly called for them. Several burly officers appeared from inside the second vehicle. Ooh. Extortionist? Mion, returning to her usual self, was nonchalantly pointing out the hoodlums to the police. Of course, the thugs were furious. But, now that it had come to this, there was nothing they could do. It was their loss. Ooh, is Uisi here? That's the question. That sounds like him. The officers handcuffed the thugs and dragged them towards the patrol cars. Oh no, not Daffic. <laughs> oh yeah, you're... Well, they kind of are. We did kick their motorcycles for literally no reason. No matter how much of a ruckus they caused, the officers paid no heed. In the blink of an eye, they were crammed inside the two vehicles. They could still be heard yelling while inside the police cars, but what were they were saying was no longer intelligible. There he is! It's Oisi! <laughs> he was probably a detective. The man leading the police peered at my face. The portly man, after taking a quick look around, addressed the crowd. Here's to peace! <laughs> Just don't go around kicking motorcycles anymore, idiot. <laughs> the foo foo foo, my favorite laugh. Ah yeah. The way she and talked didn't have a very pleasant tone. <laughs> oh yeah, she is she does not look happy to be uh, here with Uisi. Well, actually, that makes sense. Because I think she knows Uisi is, like, investigating Hinamizawa, being like, I think that Keiichi's friends are behind some of these crazy murders that are happening. <laughs> so that actually makes sense. <laughs> that she wouldn't like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Except the motorcycles. Oh, <laughs> Alright, well, I'm off to Hooters. <laughs> the detective named Duisi, after jovially making pleasantries, lumbered over to the waiting police car. It quickly set off, disappearing down the city street. It was over so quickly. So quickly that I was dumbstruck. I didn't even get to ask the officer what was going on. Alright, well, Keiichi, it's only fair that you do something nice for Shion to make it up to her. It was like they came here quickly to disperse the mob before any trouble could start. After making sure the police card said left, Mion snapped her finger sharply. <laughs> that was the signal. The tension melted away in an instant as everyone began smiling. A middle-aged man helped me up. Oh, he's not important. He doesn't have a sprite. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the way to do it. Be like, hey, glad you're okay, but also you did kind of start that. An older lady I didn't know the name of was concerning about my injury. Oh, trust me, country boys can be unruly, too. I was even warned by the old lady in the smock. As Shion finished applauding the dispersing group for their efforts, she strode over to me. There's that smile. Man, she got a cute smile here. She made a troubled expression as she turned her gaze downward, blushing in embarrassment. 
Of, of, of course! You heard from your sister, even though you two don't talk to each other. Yep. Oh, yay! Oh, we don't actually have to go to Hooters, because we met her early. And Wesley's like, hey, I want to thank you. Let's go to Hooters. She's like, I work there, and also, ew. Let's go to Hooters! <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, a little bit of a weird smile. Ha 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 ha! Ah, that's funny, Keiji. Oh, she got the smug smile there. <laughs> this one's the best, though. <laughs> now it was my turn for my face to go red. I didn't want to admit, but she was smot on. No, you kicked the motorcycle. You did that. I thought she was going to pull out a gun, though. <laughs> No, I do. You definitely didn't have to do that. That's true. Pass it forward. Saving for Mean Boy, not Boyd. It's a good thing to value. I was well versed in that sense of camaraderie. But the way I was rescued just now, something seemed a little off about that. While I was helped out, it was honestly almost, to an almost disturbing degree. Oh no! She, now she's trying to make us go to Hooters. Seems that she caught the glimmer of suspicion in my eyes. Without waiting for my answer, Shion began walking. Oh, but it's the end of the day, so we don't actually have to suffer through it. Yay! Well, that was sweet! It was very nice of Mion, I mean Shion, to help us out. Oh, there's gonna be a bonus tip about, like, and then they went to Hooters. No, it's not! Never mind. We're in the Angel Mort. After cooling off a bit inside the restaurant, little by little, I realized I was still on edge. There were spots here and there on my body that hurt, probably because I had been so stiff with nervousness. Shion, who had changed into her uniform, brought over two glasses of iced coffee. Great. Hi, this my patheticness really knows no bounds. But since she went through the trouble, I might as well take her up on the offer. Even though it had started out as such a lovely day, I had to get carried away and do that stupid thing. I had completely ruined it. You hit it pretty well. Oh, she got the hots for us. Well, a little embarrassed by what she just said, Shion made a show of folding her arms boldly. I was thanking Shion, but I really wanted to thank Mion. Mion, really, thank you. Oh, we'll definitely pay that one forward. <laughs> Do you plan on being in trouble? <laughs> Taking advantage of my words, she seemed happy about my promise. Okay. D darn you. No. She said that as she smiled herself, poking me in the cheek. <laughs> People are gonna think we're being weird! <laughs> Thanks to Shion's meddling, I finally cheered up a little. All the muscles in my body that had stiffened because of the incident finally began to relax a little. That's true. When I am when I'm really stressed out, I do not feel like eating. I know some people eat more when they're stressed. I eat way less when I'm stressed. I wanted to show a little restraint, but restraint really wasn't my thing. That's why I replied without any. <laughs> Pink is the easiest thing, though. Hey, I say, in the Waffle House, she ordered some pancakes from a nearby waitress. An employee ordering and from another employee seems kind of weird. No, I just like wearing this for fun. 
おじさんにね私が不良に絡まれてるところをケイちゃんが助けてくれたって言ったらねぎらってあげろって No, come on, she on You did not have to do that だから店長公認で OK ですそ、それ、どうしたの<笑>いいのかな<笑> What if he starts questioning me about it? 全然いいのです<笑> Dang, she's nice. By the time the pancakes arrived, we had entered into a relaxed conversation. As the two of us ate pancakes, we live in the mood of some chit chat. If she's taken the shift off, why did she change into the slutty outfit, though? <laughs> About what was on TV, celebrities, and that kind of thing. Hobbies, food. Really, nothing more than idle chit chat. Talking together like this, I once again became conscious of Shion being a girl. Really? What tipped you off? <laughs> hey, now that's funny talk, KG Maibara. Shion and Mion are the same person. Oh, wait, never mind. I, I read that wrong. <laughs> If there was anything different between them, it was only whether or not Mion admitted that she was Mion. But given that, how come our conversation was this different? Maybe we're seeing the real Mion here. <laughs> I just don't think of her as a woman. <笑>そんなことはないよ。男だったら容赦なくどつき倒してる。ケイちゃんとお姉が仲がいいのって、そういう脳セクシャルな関係にあると思うんです。それってなかなかできない羨ましい関係ですよ。言ってる意味がよく
日和見なんか誰もしません<笑>結構頼もしい住民性なんですよ I really admire that kind of like small tight knit community 誰かがいじめられたらみんなで結束してやっつけるわけかなんだかマフィアとかヤクザみたいな結束だなそんなこと言っちゃダメですよとてもありがたいことなんですからケイちゃんもそれに助けられたんですよ感謝の気持ちを忘れないように I have heartedly agreed I knew full well I should be appreciative 日南沢の人たちって本当に仲が良くて結束してるんだな昔からの伝統かな日南沢って昔からいろいろと敗損の危機に遭うんですよね。That is the problem with the small communities, especially if there's a large population of elderly people. Eventually they can die out. そのたびに結束して戦って、存続を勝ち取ってきたっていう歴史があるんですよ。例えば、ケイちゃん。Oh yeah! The dam project! That was actually pretty damn important in the first、uh, chapter. It was a pun, folks. Hinamizawa Dam Project. Let's see, I feel like I've heard somebody talk about it before. Yeah, they were like, let's flood the town for money. It was cancelled because the foreman killed. <laughs> We made them cancel it. <laughs> Everyone band together to kill the foreman. That sounded pretty much like the story I heard. The protest intensified to the point where it was featured in the newspapers and magazines. As a result, the plan was suspended. そんな程度の話だったんですよ。But then the cat was let out of the bag. If it were completed, it would have been the biggest dam in Japan. Not just Hinamizawa, but several villages upstream would have been submerged as well. The protests immediately began. Petitions to cancel or relocate the project were drafted and submitted to the Diet. They even went so far as to go to the Ministry of Construction of Tokyo to hand over a direct appeal to the minister. The previous landowner sued the government, stating that there were inconsistencies in the purchase agreement and the transaction should be nullified. Owners of yet unacquired land split, split their properties, increasing the number of landowners in order to stifle the project. <laughs> その頃からです。機動隊とかの暴力行為が目立ち始めたのは。機動隊って警察だろ<笑> ?You mean the police? <笑>暴力行為なんてするのかよ。殴りますよ。Oh. 蹴りますよ。私も殴られたことありますし。Ooh. Wait, this is a different sprite. Oh, wait, never mind. We've seen that before. Mad. この辺だったかな。皮が切れちゃったみたいで、血がすごい出ました。Saying that, Shion indicated her temple by poking at it. Filing a complaint against the riot police for police brutality would seem kind of strange for some reason. Naturally, they wouldn't pay heed to something like that. You wouldn't be able to establish proof on who exactly hit you, and they could justify their actions by saying you were interfering with police duties. Uh oh, not Grandma! Don't mess with Grandma. Grandma is an expert at advance wars. <laughs> Grandma killed the foreman! First, in order to call attention to the government, they filed a temporary injunction in court. Then, in order to gain public support, they called in prominent scientists to state that Hinamizawa was a valuable nature preserve. They pressured the prefectural and municipal assemblies, saying that the prefectural government ignored his constituents when he approved the project and demanded his resignation. They completely and thoroughly denounced him. Naturally, in Hinamizawa, a ferocious conflict worthy of being called the Dam War began. In order to suppress the police's brutality, they coordinated with the network channels and exposed the violence of the riot squad members to the public. 
On top of that, they put together a special expose themed around the government rep uh, repressing its citizens and aired it nationally. It worked wonders. Following that, the SWAT teams had their hands cuffed. Day after day, the petitions and demonstrations continued. Propaganda was used to garner support. The circle of support gradually expanded outwards from Hinamizawa. Either that bore fruit, or the government finally decided against it. It was announced that the dam project was indefinitely suspended just a few years ago. Nothing like a common enemy to bring people together. Shion said that as she focused off in the distance. I felt that those eyes weren't filled with anguish, but rather a sense of pride. So you didn't take on the Iona. Nakanaka Nai Kotodao. Said I okwete, cheeky the dunkets the Kirunante. Let us see my soul, my mas. Damuke Kakuva Shiren that Takedo. Sorio Noriko et eta monoa. Totemo Kito, my masia. The fear I was feeling until just now gradually began to fade. When people began to show up one after another while I was engaged with those thugs, I thought it was frightening. But now I felt from the bottom of my heart that I had been rude. The villagers prepared to defend their homelands of the death. The sense of solidarity that fostered. It might seem impudent to say this, but I was a little jealous. If I had been in Hinamizawa when the protest against the dam was going on, I might have been able to share in that sense of solidarity. <laughs> It's always fun being the outsider of a tightly knit group of people trying to become tightly knit with them. She couldn't have been more right. So many people got together to help me out when I just moved here. Even though they were strangers whose names I didn't even know. A hot feeling began welling up inside of me. When I lived in the city, I didn't even know my own neighbors. I thought that was natural, but here that was an absurd and pathetic thing. Even though I thought of them as strangers, all the other villagers viewed me as a comrade. Happiness and warmth. I was acutely aware of those feelings as they gradually welled up inside of me. <laughs> Your pancake break is over! A more senior waitress waved her hand and called out to Shion. It seemed like it was time for work. Yes, it's important to do your job. <laughs> we already ate pancakes! We're not gonna have much of an appetite. Seemed that Shion wanted to say something, but she swallowed her words. Like we hadn't talked enough, that kind of feeling. Looking at that expression, I regretted saying something that had disappointed Mion like that. I was about to say that I could stay for a little bit longer when Shion got up from the seat. Pancakes! Thank you. Pancakes forever. Saying that, she showed me a coupon booklet as she tore out a few sheets and handed them to me. <laughs> she said that as she laughed, gently stopping me from opening my wallet. Being told with such an encouraging smile really resounded with me. Later, today was fun. Saying that, Shion smiled one more time at me. After I said it, I realized I mistakenly called her Mion. I didn't know if she realized it or not. Well, potato potato. <laughs>